Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure brings us to Orange County, California, and I will be covering some ground on my bicycle. I have ventured down to the starting point at Disneyland, where a music group that you might have currently, it is, the gates are closed, but a while back during the peak of their commercial success, the mayor gave the key to the city to them in the park itself. And that is not the only tie-in to this place that that band has. In fact, maybe you've heard of an album that refers to said establishment. They all got their starting point and began and continued and thrived, you know, but a lot of their, the beginning, all was in this neck of the woods just a few blocks away, a few miles away, all in this vicinity of Anaheim. Gonna, gonna begin here and then end up at the Orange Circle. Another little city over, so. Let's do it, I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Looking from this angle, which might be familiar to annual pass holders. Here in SoCal. Gonna be going right over the top of those buildings, just over the top. A few feet. It's the first location. I should preface this by saying these will be in no particular order. And I'm just going off what I've learned over the years, what I've heard, and what I've researched. So take it with a grain of salt. The band was started by three people, Gwen, but her brother Eric really was the forefront and the one that wanted to create it along with John Spence who worked with Gwen at a local Dairy Queen. John unfortunately passed away and Gwen took over on vocals. Well, more technically took over on lead vocals. She was doing backup. And John Spence was the one responsible for the name. His favorite saying, well, one of his favorite th sayings was, no doubt, just casually. You know, some of us have certain things that we like to say, his was, no doubt. That's how the band got its name. Fast forward just a little bit to this neighborhood of Beacon Avenue. Very close to these cross streets is a home that might be etched in your pop culture consciousness. Right over there on the right. There it is, the Beacon Street House, or the Band House, whatever you like to refer to it as. A lot of the songs were penned, the lyrics and the thoughts from Gwen's mind and the stuff that she was going through right inside that gray homestead. The music video trapped in a box, they all, the whole band stood up on top of the roof and filmed. Everyone was up there and that wrecked car the far car on the left would have been a wrecked vehicle that Gwen stood in front of, angling towards the neighbor's house for the music video for Just a Girl. They spent many years here, well, her and her brother it was the family's home. And if you watch the video for Trapped in a Box, the camera is angled down, that light pole behind the house can be prevalently seen and the angles of the roof, you know, it's all still the same, it's been reshingled. But the house across the road used to have a basketball board right there. It's been removed, but it looks like it's been removed very recently. It used to be a basketball hoop that you could see very well from that crane shot looking down across the road. It's also interesting to note that they didn't call it Avenue, they called it Street. The Beacon Street where they had their sessions and where the home was. Well, Avenue. And they used to practice in that very garage. They'd have the door open to get some fresh air and the sounds would seep out into the neighborhood. A little bit later on from that time frame, the guitar player started booking shows, ska and punk and acoustic shows at a venue that was located right around this corner, next to the post office, what is now a hotel, 
four or five story hotel. It used to be Cattleman's Wharf. With the former residence of his band members, just across into that section, the Firecracker Lounge was right here. It was inside that Cattleman's Wharf restaurant, right in this section. In fact, there's an album by Bradley from Sublime available. It's kind of rare of a performance that he did right here at this spot. They were friends. Sublime was friends with no doubt, all of them. They were all buddies. Just to show the proximity, that venue was there on the left and off in the distance, very short distance, is the Disneyland Resort parking structure. See it over there? So close. Just a short commute over this bridge, which happens to look over the freeway. About a quarter of a mile, maybe a little more than a quarter of a mile, a couple roads over, was Gwen and Eric's grandparents' house. So close, in fact, I would imagine they walked over here pretty often. Not far at all. Obviously it has been resold and there are new residents don't want to disturb them by going onto the property, but you can see the garage there, the far left tucked away where the video was shot. And Gwen walked right down that driveway. Just talked to the owner. He was out in the front yard. It was very nice to give me some details. I'm not gonna go in the backyard, but he was saying that she put her signature in the concrete around back and everything inside, it was also filmed inside, looks exactly the same. The kitchen and that food fight in the backyard. I might have forgot to mention that the song was Sunday Morning and also used was, I've heard the grandfather who owned the house also had a store, the store's still there. And I don't know if this is 100% confirmed, but in the music video, the gentleman behind the counter, it is a rumor, a heavy rumor that that is Gwen and Eric's grandfather. Don't quote me on that, but the store is right in this vicinity as well. Actually, it's back this way. Back by the house. Oh dang, it is way closer than I expected. Just right here on the, on the right hand side. now called Five Points Market, but I believe it was called M&M Grocers or M&M Market at that time. This is looking back to a different angle. Railroad tracks are still there that she stepped over. Everything pretty much looks the same. On the corner of Citron Street and Santa Ana Street in Anaheim. I'm gonna put my mask on. Actually, I have it on now. That's why my mouth sounds a little muffled. I'm gonna go in and see what it looks like inside and maybe get myself an orange juice. You know, when in Rome. There you go. Taste, I had to remove my mask to drink it, obviously. And one of the owners was in there and she clarified that grandfather did not own the store, they did. He just showed up for the taping of the video and their family for years, according to her. Wow, I was expecting this next location to be a little further, but it was just around the corner on Harbor Boulevard. Tony, the bass player, when he was young, this was his family's residence. And it's said that they had a few no doubt practices in this building as well. His family lived in the back and they had a storefront 
right here in this little section that protrudes outward. For many years, him and Gwen dated. You know, up until around the time of Tragic Kingdom, or right around that, before the release, and a lot of the songs on that album were written about Tony and the breakup and her feelings. Practices weren't too difficult because they were all basically in the same neighborhood. Not far at all. Brisk walk from all locations. The office here at Melrose Abbey is closed due to these times and circumstances. Cannot ask any information on where John Spence. Laid to rest. Couldn't find much information other than this is, these are the grounds. Not to take anything away from the talented members that continued on the band after his passing, but I thought a little nod and some acknowledgement to some that might not even realize that he was the original singer. They carried on. parallel to me is Gene, what is now Gene Autry Way. And up here, over the hill, kind of down below the road, is an old rehearsal space that used to exist. Yep, the buildings are still down there. It was one of these six or seven structures, either on the left or the right, where the stomp box was, the name of the rehearsal space, where a few different bands practice constantly honing their craft Tom Dumont which went on to become the guitar player of no doubt was in a metal band by the name of rising and they were in the same rehearsal space that's how he met them and eventually joined the band the rest is history Santa Cruz Street as stated I can't really pinpoint which one of these was the spot, but it was one of them. About to cross over into Orange now, but not first by looking at the Honda Center, which used to be called the Arrowhead Pond. It was there in the 97, around 97, they recorded and did a video special called Live at the Tragic Kingdom. By the way, look how much just in a couple days this riverbed is dried up. It's not completely dry, but it's getting there. Back towards Old Town Orange. Yep, I 
think this is it right here. I was looking at the insert of the album for our Tragic Kingdom. There is a multitude of photographs and one of them in the band, one of them's in the shopping cart, the drummer's in a shopping cart, the other ones have their instruments. The sidewalk looked very familiar. I thought, that's the orange circle. That is this pattern. I just had to match up a few things to figure out exactly where it was. I have pinpointed it to this precise spot based on these little drainage grates here and the the bricks here, the little placards. Everything matches up exact from the pattern and the coloration to the number of each of these. Gwen was doing a little bit of a jump holding onto the back of the shopping cart. Her brother Eric right back here carrying his keyboard. She was very persistent on having her brother in the promotional photos even though he had left the band by that point. He was such an integral part of their existence. There's those spots. Pretty cool, right? That's going to do it for today. Whoa. bike however up with a truck look at this a few of them love wow gotta love the orange circle this is almost a daily occurrence so awesome there's a bug Now I did not hit each and every spot pertaining to the subject matter of the beginnings and the incarnation, the continuing career of No Doubt, but I hit quite a few that are all in close pride. Going first to, to the Disneyland Resort area. Hello. And then venturing around there and then going all the way back up and ending here at the Orange Circle. I got a heck of a workout there back and then all the other little nooks and crannies if you enjoyed this particular episode give it a big thumbs up and if you're new here please subscribe by doing so it helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel take it a step further ring that notification bell and i'll see you in the next video the vlog is over